Hey everybody, how you doing? It's Ficious, and welcome to a brand new tutorial on doing tutorials. Actually, today is kind of a multifaceted video. I'm going to be doing some software review for you. I'm going to be covering two programs, and the ones you see the icons for on screen, Epic Pen and Zoom It. But I'm also going to be talking about why you might want to use these programs, which is tutorial purposes. If you watched the last video I did, which was the video on how to free up some missing space on a USB flash drive, you'll see that briefly within that tutorial I did some on-screen annotations to help show you what I was talking about. That's what these two programs do. I kinda got the motivation to do that from watching CBT Nuggets. They do a ton of on-screen annotation in their video. And I like that way of presentation because it kinda brings you back to that classroom setting where you have a teacher up on the blackboard or the, the green board with their chalk and they're sitting there and writing things out for you as they explain them. Yeah, we don't have to do that on our computers because, you know, we can show things with our mouse cursor and we can pull things on screen. But it kind of helps some people learn because that's what we're used to. That's how we're raised. And if it helps elevate your presentation to the next level, then why not try to implement it at some point? So I might not always use the on-screen annotation, but when I feel it's appropriate, I'm going to try to start throwing that in there. So the thing is, if you go and you look around on the Internet and you ask, how does the uh, CBT Nuggets guys do this drawing on screen? The answer is they use a program called Camtasia, and Camtasia has on-screen drawing built into it. But Camtasia is a pretty expensive program, and not everybody has the money to spend on such a program because either they're not serious enough about it or they just don't need it. I can tell you that right now I'm recording this presentation with a free piece of software, and it's called Open Broadcaster Software, OBS. And then both of these programs I'm going to be showing you today are also free. So yeah, it's great to support people out there who have paid products, but when you have free products out there that work just as well for you, then I believe that those people deserve your time and attention just as much, if not more so. So these are the two programs I discovered that can be used to do on-screen annotations, and they work with any kind of recording software that captures your desktop. And they're quite different from each other, and I, they uh, have different purposes. So what I thought I would do is do like a very short mini review and point out the pros and cons of each and do the compare and contrast between what kind of features they offer and let you decide which one you'd rather use for your purposes. And also, of course, we kind of covered already why you might want to implement these, why these are kind of useful to have. So let's go ahead and talk about them. First is Epic Pen Setup, and that's the installer for Epic Pen. That's why I have two icons on here because this one does have to be installed first. It's a very lightweight installer. It doesn't use up any system resources. There is no hidden adware or spyware. You can download it from SourceForge, and I'll put the link in the description of the video. The other is Zoomit, and that's an executable, and it runs directly in a sandbox environment, so there is no installer for this one. This came off the uh, Microsoft TechNet, so I'll put a description uh, link for that as well. I'm going to start with Epic Pen. I'll go ahead and run it now, and I'm going to drag on screen. This is your little pop-up you get. This is your graphical user interface. It's very, very simple and very self-explanatory. As a matter of fact, there really is no explanation on how to use this program, so that's why I wanted to cover a few of the hidden features I found that you wouldn't have thought were going to be in here. If we have the cursor selected, this is our standard navigating through Windows mode with our Windows cursor. It's as, as if you were not using the program at all. Once you flip over to one of the drawing tools, here now we have the pencil selected. We can literally draw on screen, real time, and we can choose a different size, up to four different sizes here. This one here is the highlighter, which is exactly the same as the pencil tool, except for the fact it has a lower opacity, so you can use it to highlight something and still see through what you've written over. Then we have the eraser tool. If you touch something, it will delete the entire piece of that drawing, so it's not like you'd have to sit there and erase every single piece of it. It'll grab the whole thing in one go if it's connected. And then you have the clear screen button. This one here will let you grab a screenshot, and then here's your color palette. So very, very simple to use. Let me tell you what's really good about this one, the really cool surprising features. First, over here in the corner, you'll see my CPU usage widget. You'll notice that it does move, and you can see it moving. If I was to start drawing something, like I said here, look at this CPU widget. Uh, you can see that it's still moving. Even though we started drawing, we did not affect our desktop. We effectively put it, uh, placed a layer of drawing over the top of what we see without affecting it. So we're drawing over a piece of glass right now. All of our desktop is still working as if it normally would. That means if I was annotating a video or a PowerPoint presentation, 
I would not affect that presentation or video. You would still see it just like normal. The contrast, which is zoom it, once you start drawing with that one, it basically takes a screenshot of your desktop and you start drawing on that screenshot. Almost like automating if you were to capture a screenshot of your desktop and then paste it into a simple um, drawing editor like Microsoft Paint. So it does it seamlessly and it does it very well, but it means that if you wanted to mark up something static, uh, you're fine, but if you wanted to mark up something dynamic like a video or a presentation, something that moves, you're gonna lose that ability. The other two things, and these are totally surprise features, I just put down the mouse and I grabbed my Wacom tablet. This was basically, as far as I can tell, made to work with a tablet and work with it very, very well because check this out it works even best if I grab a bigger brush you can see it I'm gonna start pressing very very light and then I'm gonna start pressing harder this actually has pressure sensitivity built into it just like it would if I was in Photoshop and I set my brush uh, size to my pen pressure so if I press lightly I get thinner lines if I press harder I get thicker lines that's really really cool and then because uh, I have the eraser on that Wacom pen if I turn it over and I start drawing with the eraser it starts erasing things just like as if I had selected the eraser tool that really helps streamline the annotation process and the chances are if you're doing a lot of annotation you might want to use a tablet to do it anyways because it's much more natural writing and uh, drawing with a pen than it is with your mouse of course you can do it both ways and you'll get used to whichever way you choose to do so that's kind of epic pin in a nutshell let's go ahead and cut over to zoom it now let's put down the uh, Wacom pin and we'll close epic pin out and we'll open up zoom it now <clears throat> this runs in your little bottom right hand side in your windows tasks so you can pop it open and look at all of the different options so this one shows you some of the built-in options zoom it does not run through a graphical user interface it's much more hotkey driven so and just like it says it has a zoom mode here when I press control one I'm going to actually zoom in on the screen and I can choose the default zoom level and once it's zoomed in I can control it with the uh, the scroll wheel on my mouse to go in and out further as I please and then once I've gotten to a zoom level I'm comfortable with I, cl I click the left mouse button and I can start drawing on it so we have zoom we have live zoom which is the same as before except it will not take a screenshot of your desktop it will actually still keep moving in the background so a video or PowerPoint presentation would still keep moving as you're zoomed in now what I said before is still true I said you cannot draw on a moving background so even though live zoom exists as soon as you start drawing on that it's actually going to take us a, a snapshot of it and stop moving so you cannot mark up on live presentations here's the drawing mode and within the drawing mode are a lot of different hotkeys here. We have Control Z to undo last. We have E to clear everything. You can change the color of your brush by pressing a few different main colors. Red, green, blue, orange, and yellow, and pink. And you can do other markups like the uh, Shift key for rectangle. You can use Control key for an ellipse. Uh, tab key for an arrow. Uh, a lot of different shapes in here. So these can be very useful. I suck at drawing so instead of drawing an arrow I can use this program's built-in arrow and get a nice perfect arrow every time. You can also press W or K and you get just a blank piece of color background for white or black so that you can mark up stuff like you would on some scratch paper. And it has typing. So if you have really horrible handwriting, which I do, and you don't want to write out something, you can actually type it on screen so again it's very much like a very basic Microsoft Paint editor and you get all these little features that would be built into the, one of those kind of programs except it's working seamlessly with your desktop and it acts as if you're drawing on your desktop rather than having to import it into some kind of editor the break feature is again if you're doing a presentation and you say everyone gets a 15 minute uh, go to the bathroom break smoke break whatever you hit the hotkey for that on screen you'll actually see a live timer start counting down with your break time so this I think is made more for a live presentation the other I think is really good for a recorded presentation let's uh, iron out a few of the other differences between them one thing zoom it can do that the other doesn't is zoom in that's the whole purpose I think of this program 
I like that feature a lot. If you look at my old tutorials, when YouTube first came out with 1080p, I used to always keep the top like one fifth of my screen with the uh, magnifying tool for Windows at a 200% zoom level. And the reason is, a lot of people back then didn't have fast internet, and YouTube always sucked at playing 1080p videos. It would be very, very laggy. So I expected people to watch my videos in 480p, maybe 720p, but I always captured at 1920 by 1080p. If I'm capturing at full resolution, and to see small text like this, you have to have it at full resolution to see the text properly, and you're watching it at half the resolution, You mean that means you cannot see what I'm reading. And if I'm telling you a tutorial based on this information, that's a really useless tutorial. So what I did was I kept the zoom tool at the top so that wherever my mouse cursor was, you saw a very zoomed up and blown up version of it at the top of the screen, making it easy for you to see that information at a lower resolution. I thought it was a great idea. I never saw any belt, anyone else really do it, so you know I'm surprised it didn't catch on. But I stopped using it when YouTube finally kind of got better about high resolution videos, and now internet speeds have gone up for a lot of people. So I pretty much assume that you can watch the 720p version and it won't be too much of a big deal. But zoom it kind of brings back another way to do that same thing I used to do. If I need you to see some information on screen, all I have to do is zoom in on it. So let's go ahead and try it out. Let's go ahead and hit control in one. And it started zooming in. And as I move around with my mouse, I can choose which part of the screen I want to start annotating. If I use my scroll wheel, I can zoom in and out further. And once I found a comfortable level I'd like to be, I press the left mouse button and I have my drawing tool. So now I can start drawing. Here's some of the cool features I talked about. Shift lets us do straight lines. So if you suck at drawing straight lines, you can do straight lines. Control lets us do squares. I think it was shift and control. Yep, there's the arrow. So you can see you get really good annotations without having to draw them out. T is for text. So again, if I want to say, here is this icon, I just type it in there instead of writing it. So it's both time saver and it's more neat. What we're missing here is we don't have a highlight function, but that's not a big deal to me. I can just throw a square around something. I don't usually need to highlight anything. And um, the idea, you'll see that CPU meter isn't moving anymore because we took a static screenshot of what was on screen. So you lose any of that information that might have been valuable during your presentation when you're marking up here. But the idea that you can blow up things and make it easier to see, that's a great thing. <clears throat> now the last thing I'll point out between these two, I told you that Epic Pen seemed like it was made for tablets. It just works very smoothly and it has the hidden features of the pressure sensitivity and the eraser. Zoom it is the opposite. It seems like it hates my tablet. The already having things like the text and the arrow make it seem like it's a very keyboard and mouse based program. But what I noticed, if I start drawing something with my mouse, I get perfect response. Like as soon as I type or as soon as I press down my mouse button, I start drawing a line. But with my tablet, if I don't slow down, if I don't say if I want to write T, I have to press and hold and then move over and press and hold. If I try to do it fast, See, I didn't even get the bottom part of the T. I just put a dot there. So I have to slow down. There's like a big delay. That was an E, and I only got a dot here and a dot there. So you can still use the tablet with this, but you need to slow things down quite a bit to have it work right. It just doesn't seem like it was made for the tablet. If I try to use the eraser on my pen, instead of... Um, doing like it did before and erasing it just starts drawing and there's no pressure sensitivity so really what I think it comes down to is if you want to use a tablet probably Epic Pen is going to be more what you want to try first if you're a keyboard and mouse guy you might want to try zoom it unless you have specific features of one or the other that you need which was basically Epic Pen has to be installed zoom it doesn't Epic Pen lets you have a live background while zoom it doesn't and zoom it lets you zoom in so you can show things in more detail while epic pen does not those are the three biggest differences between them they're both free software so go ahead and try them both out 
and I hope that you guys now realize that there is a good reason to kind of bring this into your presentation. As I'm a teacher, I can teach other teachers as well, and so if I help make the world a better place with better tutorials for everybody, hey, mission accomplished. So once again, this was Vicious. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.